Hello, this is Giancarlo, and this is the fourth part to a four-part video series on going through a lesson that I did with my grade 9 students on identifying a linear versus nonlinear relationship using either a table of values graph or equation. Uh, this, in this video, you'll be looking at the third investigation, uh, which is identifying the difference using an algebraic equation. Uh, again, if you've watched uh, the other parts, uh, you'll know that I'll be using notebook software, uh, making use of the Sentio student response system uh, during this particular uh, investigation. So where we left off is we've already done an investigation on identifying the difference using a table of values, uh, identifying the difference using a graph, and now we're going to identify the difference using an algebraic equation. So again, I can start off by asking the students uh, how they think they'd be able to tell the difference. And then go on to the actual investigation. Now in this investigation, what I've done uh, is I set up uh, this, the, a bunch of graphs with their uh, algebraic equations listed. And if you notice on the right-hand side here, I have these two pages. One of them has a linear cart, the other one a nonlinear cart. And what I'm going to have the students do is come up to the board and grab the equation, which I've infinitely cloned, and they're either going to drop it to the nonlinear cart if they think it's nonlinear. And if they think it's linear, I'm going to have them grab it and drag it to the linear cart. So what you'll notice is that equation that I dropped, uh, would, the linear one would be here, and the nonlinear one would be here. So I'm going to go ahead and let the students uh, come and drag and drop each of these equations onto their respective pages. Once the students have completed that, I'm going to take a look at each of these pages. And now this isn't that important anymore, so I'm just going to minimize it. And same with the other page. I'm going to minimize this cart. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make use of the dual page display, which I just found at the top here. And I'm going to display both of these pages with both of their equations. And so the purpose here is to get students in groups to discuss and compare or discuss the similarities and differences with these equations. Um, you notice what has happened here is I'd actually had the students group all this, the similar looking equations. You notice all the uh, squared, so all the polynomials with degree 2 are grouped together, and then all polynomials with degree 3, and then all the exponentials are grouped as, together as well. Uh, and I had them do the same here. And they're going to discuss similarities and differences uh, between both of them. Once they've identified uh, what would make a linear relation algebraic equation different from a nonlinear relation, uh, we're going to go on and create a summary. I'm going to take it out of dual page mode and we're going to go ahead and, and summarize. Again, students, uh, if they had access to their computers, they would have their own file which they'd be typing in their uh, responses or their own description of what they noticed. And then I would put up my own description and I'm making use of some words here in terms of the degree. That's probably something students wouldn't have used. And I'm going to tell the students that we'd used, seen this word before. And in fact, we've seen it in the first unit when we did the algebra. And to refresh their memory, what I've done is I've linked this to that actual page, uh, which is actually right here. And all I did was I grabbed that page from, I guess it would have been two months ago, and just dragged and dropped it onto this file and created a link. So now when I click on uh, this word, uh, sorry, click here, where it says click here. Uh, it's going to take me to this lesson. And what I've done is I just used the highlighter to highlight where I've used that word before. So it should be familiar uh, where I've used that word before. And so you notice I do a lot of uh, going back and forth. As we all know, uh, teaching mathematics uh, was linear, and learning it is definitely not linear. Uh, so this kind of helps with that nonlinearity. So once I've, I've done the summary, uh, I'm going to want to assess the students for understanding. This one I'm going to make use of my Sentio. And what I 
uh, would have done is I put up a bunch of equations, ask the students to select all that uh, all that would represent linear relations. Uh, I would make sure that students understood the concept. If they didn't, I would have to go back uh, and revisit my previous graphs. Let's go back here. I'd have to revisit uh, these examples, perhaps take a different approach to help them better understand. And once I felt that they've understood the concept, I can go back and and refer back to the beginning of the lesson where uh, we did our brainstorm and we discussed the differences and what we talked about now we should be able to tell the difference of linear and nonlinears just by looking at either table values graphs and equations uh, and so that concludes I'll put one final check mark that concludes all three investigations of investigating uh, how you would tell the difference between a linear and a nonlinear whether you have a table of values, graph, or equation. Uh, the last thing I do with the students is leave them with some practice questions for them to practice on their own and in groups, and then leave them with some homework. So that concludes the four parts of uh, this four-part video. Uh, in it, you've seen an introduction, investigations, and you've seen how I've used notebook software CentOS Student Response System and SmartSync uh, to deliver this lesson.